to Roaring Tigers Garage. I'm Steven, your host for today's episode, and today we are going to replace the convertible top on Jet. This is the original top, and the fabric is in excellent shape. However, the rear plastic window is, is cloudy and is cracked, and it leaks, so it needs to be replaced. We have this wonderful replacement top from Auto topsdirect.com. It has a glass window in it. The glass window didn't come out in the 986 series until 2003, but fortunately they did have some forethought and they actually put the electrical plug in for the defrost on the window and it already exists here behind the driver's seat. So we're going to install that. Uh, the, you get to download some very good instructions. Be sure you read those before you get started because there are a few things that you're going to need on this list of tools that you probably don't have and it's some specialty uh, adhesives uh, for applying here. Uh, but everything else you should have. If you're already a do-it-yourself person, you, you already have that. But it's detailed, lots of great photos. Uh, and of course, you'll have this video here that we'll have on Roaring Tigers Garage for you to reference as well. So let's get it going. So the first step according to the instructions is to find a dry, comfortable working environment. There's already a fail because we're here in Houston and it's August and uh, it's been raining all morning so it's going to be a muggy day. Anyway, the next step is to put the top in service position so you can release the cables and then we're going to remove this panel here. So the first thing you can do is pop these little plastic fairings off of both sides and they actually pop up quite simply. There's just one little plastic clip on there, and there's one here, actually there's three. There's here, here, and down there. So, very easy to just pop on out. Take those, they're old, so clean them up, and maybe condition them with some plastic rubber treatment, and get that going. The next thing is we get these 10 millimeter bolts here, so we can take this whole uh, fairing off here. Now, I recommend that you take an awl, by here, and just lightly, lightly mark the perimeter of this frame on here so that it makes you get this all squared up later when you go to put it back on. So next thing we do have to is get this rubber seal out of here and it comes off the back and you just pull it because it, it's basically it has a little it slides into a slot and it has a little bit of adhesive in it. Just pull gently. You see this adhesive we'll be cleaning all that out and putting a little bit of it back in there when we we uh, put it back in. So only come to the corner don't come all the way out the front yet and then there are eight screws on this, there's a plate right here, there's six on that plate, and then there's one that actually holds this rubber piece in here on either side. So take those eight screws out, they're all the same, take all those out. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is pull this strip off of here, and actually not this strip, it's this strip right here. Uh, it's all attached, that metal strip here is attached to this rubber piece here, so you've got to pull these four screws out here. Uh, the instructions say these screws are of different lengths, but when I did the other side, they were all the same length, but if they are different lengths, keep them in order so you know which one goes where. And as you can see here, we already pulled the, the strip off the front here and those eight screws and, uh, and pulled that plate off of there. So here we go. This is a T15. Once you have those screws out, this metal plate just kind of pops down just like this pops down and it is, does have a little bit of adhesive in the front. Okay. I'm going to slide that forward, pull the adhesive with it. Just make sure that when you're pulling something it is the adhesive and not a piece of rubber. And so all this adhesive here will replace when we put it back in. So after we take all these screws out of here, we take the metal plate out of there and set it aside. We'll clean it and get it ready. Uh, then this aluminum panel right here has four screws in it. And this is actually where the different sized screws are. So you've got a couple black ones and a silver one. And then there's another one back here. So in the very back, there's a little rubber piece which you just kind of slide out. Looks like this. Underneath it is a fourth screw and it's also black. So you've got the three black ones and the one silver one. Just keep them all in the right order. Black, black, silver, black to get them in the right order. So let's, not, let's take those out real quick. 
take those out. And then I'll show you the next step, black. Black, same length. Silver, shorter. And this one that was back underneath this little plastic or rubber tab. And I'm gonna set these over in the table in the same order I pulled them out. Black, same length as the black. I'm just gonna set it here temporarily. But actually, while I think about that, I got this towel right here. There are some, when the convertible top has water bank in here, there's some drain holes down here. And you don't wanna drop any screws. So I'm gonna stuff a towel down in here in case something falls down there, then I don't have to go chasing it. So now once that's done, then you're gonna, you're gonna pull this off. Just pull it back, because this is glued with two-sided tape, which is what we're gonna use as well. And then, then right here there's an aluminum plate, and it's just glued right there. It's not tucked underneath here. But what I recommend we do is take the putty knife and catch the bottom of the aluminum plate right here, and then just gently pull, twist it, and kind of slide down until that pops up. If you try to pull this up, you're gonna bend this aluminum plate and you'll never get it back to align correctly, so don't take that chance. Well, there you go. So that's how that comes out like that. All right, so once you get this pulled up, then you have to just peel the fabric back here. Again, it's all just here with two-sided tape. Just pull it back with your fingers. Stay with me here real time. See the next step too. And it's really only glued right here on this edge. And right here on this edge up here as well as you can see. See right here, check, and here. Okay. Good. Okay. Then pull it back gently. And then you just have the plate. All you have left now is the plate. And you have this uh, cable. This cable that runs up through here. And it's tied into the plate right here. And it's hooked into this spring, which is shrink wrapped. And I have to grab a razor. I have to grab a razor so that we can trim that. Little Benny Hill music. All right, razor. Just cut down the shrink wrap. Everything's metal in here, so you're not going to hurt anything with the razor. Okay, all the way down. Get through there. There we go. Okay. Now, the shrink wrap, just, just separate it. See, just separate it just like this. And pull it on out. Then, this little eye hook is on this spring. You just need to Snap it off there just like that. And then that wire, there's a slot at the end of the plate, just slides right out of that slot. There you go, that plate's ready to be cleaned up for reuse. Next, there is a screw, this cable, you follow this cable down, and there's a screw in here. And you may have to tip the, your uh, convertible top back a little bit so that you can get your uh, screwdriver, and it's a T25, get your T25 on there. Remember, we put a towel down there. There's a screw, and then another end that looks similar to this, and a star lock washer. So next is this rear main seal that comes out of here. And it's kind of snug in here. You should be able to just kind of pull it out, and it doesn't feel like it wants to come. But what you could do, and I'm using an awl carefully, is I'm going to the end of it over here, and you can see how this 
it's a big fat seal here and then it stops, but actually the other piece of it actually stays in the channel over there. So I'm gonna actually catch the bottom edge of that and pull it out of the, pull it out of the, the channel, I hope. I'll get it started. There we go. There we go. Okay. So. There we go. All right. See? See how it ends and this is in here? So basically, I got behind it with an awl just right here. Kind of fat enough or a small screwdriver. Something that you don't want to poke in and damage that and pull the end out. And now I can pull the whole thing. I can pull the whole seal. Note there's no sealant on this. This is a dry fit. Okay, also note all the dirt. So we'll wash that sucker. All right, so once you have the rubber strip out of there, now you gotta pull the fabric off. You just catch the corner of the fabric underneath it, it's glue it up under there, and pull it all off. I've kind of pulled it off already. But kind of note where where the glue strips are. Look, there's a, uh, a strip of two-sided tape here, and there's one on the inside here, and possibly this third row right here. All right, we're gonna be pulling all this rubber stuff out of here in a minute anyway, so we'll get to take a look at it. So let's see what that looks like. So here we go, here's, there's this strip right here. Here's the second strip. Voila. And then the last bit you gotta get out is, see this little rubber seal right here? All right, so, if you can catch the edge of it, you see I've got myself a little, little pick and I'm just catching the, the back edge of that rubber seal. Here we go. Here we go. All right, just like so. And that's the last bit that actually holds this sucker in place. All right, now with that locking strip out of there, we're gonna pull the top out of here. Remember where we thought this might have been a third strip of glue or uh, two-sided tape? It appears that that is actually supposed to be glued and it should not be coming apart. So another good reason we're replacing that. So it normally wouldn't be exposed, but now we're just gonna pull this out of the channel. The next thing was to, to pull back and pull this out. And you can see this rib right here it fits in this slot right here. So that's what you're sliding out. So when you're pulling on it, you understand what it is you're pulling through. Make sure the top is, is back enough that this uh, cable doesn't get caught up in there. So then once that's free, then, you, then there's another similar rib that's wrapped around here and you just slide it up. You can see here's the rib and that's the slot. And you'll see that of course when we go to put it all back together as well. Once you do that, then there's this uh, Velcro strip, which it goes around this bar right here. Undo that. And then I'm gonna go to the other side. And you can see there's a rib here that we gotta pull out of this slot. And there's a rib here that we gotta pull out of that slot. Then also take a look underneath it. See all this dirt and stuff on the, in the inner headliner? We're gonna clean all that up before we put the new top on. We might leave the leaf here though. So as we slid the top out of here, we found that, look, the, uh, this channel that holds that rib is awful big. Why? Because this plastic piece is broken. So, probably just because it's old and brittle. And so, uh, it looks like we're gonna have to get a new one of those because I don't think that's fixable. A lot of stress right there. And it looks to me like once we pop it off, then we have to slide it off this rib, which holds up the headliner. So, we're gonna do that. It looks like it just all pops from the front. So yesterday we talked about this as it was pulling the, the convertible top off of here. We noticed that it was cracked and down at this far end you could see that it was a gap and it was allowing the cord which holds the convertible top down. The cord was coming out of it and that crack was to about right here and it was actually starting at this end as well. So the way this thing works is it normally sits snapped on that that rail bow there and this headliner slides into this back piece and then the convertible top actually slides into this slot and this slot right here, two places that hold it down. So look for this piece online. There's no part number on it. 
I uh, can't find it in the Porsche drawings and part manuals. Talked to a couple of Porsche parts experts. Uh, they basically have no idea what I'm talking about. So it looks like this option, the only option at this point is to uh, repair it. So basically the crack is at the bottom of this channel right here. And, and basically this snaps down onto this aluminum bracket here. And you can see that as it goes over the snap right here, it's gonna pull that way. So it's in tension. So we need something to keep it from breaking. First thing I did was go ahead and use a super glue like um, product to, to basically glue it all back in place so that it would have the right camber to it and uh, be in the right shape. So then I actually put an, a JB weld or an epoxy bead on the bottom here. And I'll let that cure overnight. I don't have a great confidence that that's really going to work well because it's just an epoxy and this is going to be in tension and pull apart. What I really need is some sort of a metal clip that maybe runs over here over the hump and then over here and then gets epoxied or bonded or something down the way. I don't think that's very practical either so I think the next reasonable thing is some sort of a fiberglass system. So I purchased uh, this from Home Depot. It's these fiberglass patches. There's a bunch of different sizes in here, but I'm basically going to cut them in about, uh, looks like maybe an inch to an inch and a half wide strips so I can come down over the hump in here. So basically, we'll lay the strips down, we'll push them down with a stick uh, and run those all the way along there. And then they, they're in a pouch with self-curing epoxy already on them. So basically slap them down there. Uh, the other first thing we're going to do first is we're going to try to roughen up these surfaces here with some sandpaper. All right, well, here you go. We, uh, this uh, patch went on fairly well. I cut the strips in an inch and a half widths and then basically just pressed them in here. They're already soaked with all the epoxy on them. Uh, they're a little thicker than I had hoped, so they were a bit challenging to uh, push through the curves and hold, hold in there till they cured. Uh, this is epoxy actually cures under ultraviolet light and I had an ultraviolet flashlight that I used for refrigerant leak checks. And so I was able to hold it in place and shine the UV light on it and get it to cure slightly so I can move on down the road. And I just basically pressed it, shined it down there, pressed, shine, press, shine. So anyway, it turned out pretty well. Next time I do this, I would, if I had to do it again, I would use a thinner fiberglass sheet and my, probably my own epoxy. It would probably be a little bit easier to uh, get it to lay down in there. Uh, so right now, I'm going to basically clip all the hairs and trim all this stuff up and do a light sanding, smooth that out a little bit, and then I'm going to spray it with this SEM Trim Black, and this is a good paint to touch up all your exterior plastic, black plastic pieces around the car. Trim Black paint, and just to touch it up so it looks pretty, uh, although you'll probably never see it. But anyway, that's how the repair is going to go. Well, there you have the removal of a convertible top from a 986 Boxster. Be sure to watch part two as we install a brand new top with a glass window uh, that comes from Auto Tops Direct. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to like this video and like us and subscribe to us on Facebook and YouTube. Till next time.